attention. Americans have the freedom of choice, and your choice for professional wrestling should be the American Wrestling Federation. Destroyer, six foot four, looks to be about 275 pounds, but he's a mystery man. And what a matchup to kick things off with the American Wrestling Federation, the most unique and innovative wrestling promotion in the world today. And Terry, for the fans who are not yet clear on the rules, the format for the American Wrestling Federation, please enlighten our fans. Okay, I'll make it like turtle soup. I'll make it snappy. What we have here is we have three four-minute rounds. If you get thrown or you throw your opponent over the top rope, you're disqualified. If you put your hands on the referee, and if it's Gary Grunke, why would you? Immediate disqualification. Paul Alperstein, the president, says this is going to be ruled by law and order. The rules will be obeyed. If there's a match that goes to whole time limit, then the referee's decision is final. And right now, the ultimate destroyer with the at least momentary control over Tito Santana. Great escape by Tito. This guy looks absolutely tremendous. He gets better and better every year out. And as I said at the outset, one of the most popular stars in wrestling today. He has held championships everywhere he's appeared. And certainly, he has his sights set on the top rung of the ladder here in the American Wrestling Federation. Yeah, Tito Santana has done it all. Great arm bar and take over there and a fireman's carry by the ultimate destroyer. Then Tito comes up with a great head scissors, putting all of his weight over his opponent. And the only way out for the ultimate destroyer is to head for the ropes. But Tito's done it all. He's been in every organization. He's been to the top of the ladder. Nobody's been as innovative. Nobody is brand new it's like the American Wrestling Federation. We've got it going on. And Tito Santana thinks that he's the man to be the first champion. We'll have to wait and see. We certainly will. Nice go behind the ultimate destroyer. I know you tried to talk to him a little bit earlier on in the locker room. Didn't get much response there. We know very little about this man, but he's huge and what an elbow. Drills Tito to the side of the head off the rope. Big shoulder tackle. Now this guy's a big tough guy. Good agility jumping over Tito Santana. There's that experience. Hip lock takeover. Follows it up with an aerial wing over. Tremendous move by Tito Santana. But going back to what you were saying, this ultimate destroyer just sits in the corner and doesn't talk to anybody. He's very intense, and finally, the only thing he told me was, get out of here. So I did. 
Well, you know, when you talk about intensity, they don't come any more intense than Tito Santana. He is a master technician in that ring right now, working on the arm of the Ultimate Destroyer. You've talked so many times, Terry, about the game of human chess. Take away at least one weapon in the arsenal. But right now, Ultimate Destroyer drills him with the knee. And that headbutt whipped off the ropes. Over the top, leapfrog Santana. Now he ducks that clothesline. Big atomic drop. Right over the top row. Wait a minute, Mick Karsh. That's got to be a disqualification. Tito Santana threw him over the top rope. We have a new winner on our first match. No, I've got to disagree with you, Terry. This was obviously a discretionary call by the official. He felt that the Ultimate Destroyer's own momentum put him over the top rope. No disqualification there. How can you tell that from here with Gary Gronke all the way across the ring? How can you tell that, Mick Karsh? Well, I've been watching wrestling for some 30 glorious years, Terry Taylor. Well, I've been watching the ice capades. That doesn't mean I could ice skate. <laughs> I'll bet you can. Back to the action at hand. Santana continues to work on the arm with that hammerlock on the ultimate destroyer. And this may be a case where the rounds system comes into play right now. The pacing of the bout, when you've got that time limit staring you in the face, Terry, it changes all the strategy. Yeah, there is strategy right there. Gary Gronke, the referee. We see the clock in the right-hand corner, an innovation only in the American Wrestling Federation. Gronke's got to tell him that there's 30 seconds left. And Ultimate Destroyer. Oh, he missed with that big splash. Tito able to roll out of the way. Now does he have enough time to wrap this one up before the end of round one? Big oh. back body drop. High elevation. Tito on fire right now. Caught him with a shot to the jaw. And a drop kick. See, Tito doesn't know there's one or two seconds left. He's going to the top, but the bell rings. Well, no question he had that flying burrito in mind from that top rope, but as you said, Tito, unaware that he was that close to the end of the round, and round one is over. What a tremendous innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, again, this is the round system in the American Wrestling Federation. The wrestlers now have a rest period before round two, and I have to believe that the ultimate destroyer at this point, Terry, a very happy man that he escaped that round. Yeah, I think so, too. You got a girl walking around telling you it's round two. Nowhere else in the world do you have that. American Wrestling Federation, Tito Santana chomping at the bit. First rest period ever. First time that we've ever had a round system. And right here, I mean, this is history being made. Absolutely, and there's no question about it. The fans in attendance here today, very, very excited about it. And now the Ultimate Destroyer apparently signaling he wants even more time than is allotted here in the American Wrestling Federation. Referee says absolutely not. And look at this gesture of sportsmanship. Yeah, you know what I really like about this, Nick? It's a, have, it's a fresh start for everybody. The fans love it, too. Everybody's standing up, cheering on Tito Santana, saying, don't shake his hand. I mean, nowhere else in wrestling do you have a fresh start like this. Round two, either man can win. Round number one doesn't count. Well, certainly Tito Santana has no reason to trust the ultimate destroyer who backs him into the corner and wakes the eyes of Santana. Ultimate destroyer right now obviously throwing that rule book out the window completely, throwing out all the stops. Tremendous block into the hip. Hip lock takeout, Santana into the air drive once again, and Tito maintains control on the big ultimate destroyer. Boom! He hung him right over that top one. That, that, the ropes, the post, anything in the ring areas can either be used as an ally or a foe, and right there... Oh, my oh. hand! See, he used the rope to his advantage, the ultimate destroyer, then it backfired when he tried it again. Santana picks up the 300 pounder with, an e with ease, tremendous body slam into the drop kick. Ultimate Destroyer seeks the safety of the ring ropes. Tito will have none of that. There's a reversal. He ducks the clothesline. There's the burrito. He caught him. In for the cover. Count of one, two. It's all over. Tito Santana, ladies and gentlemen, victorious in the initial contest here in the American Wrestling Federation with the Warriors of Wrestling. Tremendously popular. And Terry, what a great matchup. Yeah, I have never seen Tito Santana look better. The first ever match on the American Wrestling Federation Warriors of Wrestling. There is your victor, Tito Santana. And he did it by a body slam right here. Follows it up with great aerial ability, a drop kick to the mug. Right here, reversal, he ducks under the clothesline, comes off for that burrito, bam! Takes the measure of his man. And ladies and gentlemen, there is your winner, Tito Santana. Let's send it to our colleague, Ken Resnick, with Tito Santana. Ladies and gentlemen, it was indeed 
history in the making, the very first match ever for the brand new American Wrestling Federation. And the answer to trivia questions for years to come, the winner of that match, nothing other than my good friend Tito Santana. Tito, congratulations. Thank you very much, Ken. You know, I'm feeling real good, Ken. I'm feeling good about the round system. I'm feeling good about wrestling in the American Wrestling Federation, bringing back good old wrestling. You've got to know how to wrestle if you're going to make it in the American Wrestling Federation. And Tito Santana knows how to wrestle. Tito, very good point. This new round system with the four-minute rounds, the break between, got to favor someone like yourself being a great tactician or in the ring. Well, that's exactly right. Not only being in shape is going to be an asset, knowing how to wrestle finally is going to pay off. And the wrestling fans like that, Ken. Arriba! There's no question one of the great all-time favorites Tito Santana will be back with more great AWF action. All right, we're back with more great American Wrestling Federation action. Here's ring announcer Billy Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is scheduled for three rounds. Introducing first from Chattanooga, Tennessee, weighing 235 pounds, Billy Joe Eaton. Yeah, he'll be eaten, eaten alive by his opponent. Take it away, Billy. And his opponent, a Federation, one of the great legends in this sport. But I have to ask you, Terry Taylor, what or who is accompanying him? What is a Rico Suave? That's a guy with all the money, with all the class. He's my kind of guy. Nobody's got any class around here except me and the hammer. And once you people realize that, you're going to be a lot better off. Well, look at the crowd reaction to Greg the Hammer Valentine, certainly not very popular with the fans of the American Wrestling Federation and accompanied to the ring by Rico Suave. You know, the Hammer, needless to say, Terry, has a reputation far and wide in this business. He has main evented everywhere in the world, and he has his sights set on the top rung, the championship here in the American Wrestling Federation. Yeah, but he's going to be new to this, too, that we have a one-minute rest period between the four-minute rounds. And I want to say I almost made a mistake. I can't really say I made a mistake. No. But each round counts because the referee keeps score. I'm new to this, too, so my 14 glorious, illustrious year career didn't really come in to help here when it comes to the rules in the American Wrestling Federation. Well, this is going to be very interesting, too. Greg the Hammer Valentine by Nate. Oh, look at this, would you? By nature, the hammer has a very plotting, methodical ring style anyway. He's not the flashiest man in the world, but I'll tell you something, he gets the job done, and he will use every bit of the four minutes to punish his opponent, I guarantee you. Yeah, he's got about as much finesse as a 16-pound sledgehammer to the jugular, but I kind of like that in a guy. You don't have to worry about Valentine doing head scissors off the top rope or anything. You just got to worry about him draining you to death. Great offense here by Billy Joe Eaton, who I didn't think from Chattanooga could shoot too long like this. Well, certainly he's got the hammer befuddled at this point in time. There's a great shot of Greg the Hammer Valentine. Not the prettiest face in the world either. But as we said, this man gets the job done. He will plow through you like a hot knife through butter. Whipped off the ropes and a nice block into the hole. Man, right across the sternum, which brought a smile to the face of his manager on the outside of the ring. Swap, what is it, Suave, Swooby? Rico Suave, and the sooner you understand that, the sooner you'll get your pockets packed. I mean, the better off you'll be. Oh. Right down on the stomach, caught part of the rib cage there. Greg the Hammer, and as we see right now, Terry, this is exactly what I was talking about. He is not in any hurry to score a pinfall or a submission here. Greg the Hammer Valentine prides himself on systematically taking his opponent apart. And why not? He loves his work, and he's got three rounds to do it. What's Suave doing, ordering a pizza? What do you mean, ordering a pizza? He's calling 911 for the Eaton family. They see how this kid's getting thrashed. We got great technology here in the American Wrestling Federation. We got a new segment called the Warriors Corner. Let's go to it. Hello, 
everybody, this is Gentleman Chris Adams here from Stratford on Avon, England. You know, everybody knows that the English style of wrestling for years and years has had rounds. The American Wrestling Federation has rounds, the Alternative Wrestling Federation. I'll be there next week. Well, there's a man that could certainly take the measure of anybody here in the American Wrestling Federation. Gentleman Chris Adams with that European technique. He's known it all his life. That could be a man that could go one on one with Greg Valentine. Yeah, Chris Adams, a true superstar in professional wrestling, but can he take the measure of Greg the Hammer Valentine? Maybe you think because it's a round system, what, what Adams started out in wrestling, what he grew up doing, would there be the difference? I don't think so. Hammer's too strong. Well, Hammer just caught a couple of boots to the midsection from Billy Joe Eaton. Shoulder tackles in the corner. I have to tell you, Terry, this would be a major upset. Oh, he took way too long. Telegraph that maneuver. And Valentine quick to follow up with that big elbow. Why in the world, if you have Greg Valentine in trouble in the corner, would Billy Joe Eaton back up 10 feet and curve on it into that elbow? And Idiot. There's, oh, he drilled him with that hammer. Valentine smells blood right now. Him, but you can't argue with the record. And Rico Suave, a very happy man indeed, as his man, Greg the Hammer Valentine, victorious. He really made easy work of Billy Joe Eaton. Del yeah, Rico Suave takes Billy Silverman's hand away. We see how Greg Valentine comes off the second rope with that elbow, using the elbow again right to the throat. And here comes his signature move, the figure four. And ladies and gentlemen, that matchup only going one round. Let's go right back up to the ring and Billy Anderson. Forget Anderson, Karsh. Look at the body in that ring right there. 280 pounds, 22 inch arms. And I'm not talking about the blonde. Sonny Rogers! Well, Sonny Rogers, an outstanding competitor in his own right. But this time, he may have bitten off more than he can chew. Weighing 280 pounds. Look at the size of Tony, Tony Atlas. Atlas. This guy, a 600-pound bench presser, former Mr. USA. That guy has got a tremendous body, almost as good as yours, Nick. Well, I'll tell you something. Sonny Rogers probably is doing what he can right now, the best move he can possibly make. Get it started before the bell, because once Tony Atlas gets rolling, this could be a long night or a short night, depending on how you look at it, for Sonny Rogers. Look at the guns on Tony Atlas. This man is absolutely incredible. You've got to see him in person to believe him, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, he's a huge man, but look at Sonny. I mean, this guy has attacked a guy that nobody thought he had a chance against, and he's doing okay. Ooh, well, a again, jawbreaker? Right underneath the chin, and so oh, you better not prance and show off to the crowd, Sonny Rogers. You've got Tony Atlas in a bad way. You better stay on him. I don't know how long this offense is going to last. Just that quick, Sonny Rogers, like a rubber ball bouncing off bricks. Wait a minute. Atlas can't even see him, and Rogers is bouncing off him. Well, he saw him that time, picks up a big body slam. Oh, my word. Big mistake on the part of Sonny Rogers to raise the ire of Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. Big headbutt, he drilled him. Everything on Tony Atlas is big. Yeah, Sonny Rogers got the right idea. Oh. Evacuate, falls right down on the ground. Man, I'll tell you what, he came out to attack Mr. USA. I don't know if that's a great strategy. The people seem to like it. Well, I guarantee you, Sonny Rogers doesn't like it, and he is in absolutely the best place he can be right now. He's waving off the referee, waving off Tony Atlas. And here's an example, Terry, where once again the round system comes into play. Obviously, Sonny Rogers is buying some time here. Yep. Referee Jesse Hernandez, it took Tony Atlas five minutes just to get around him. That Jesse's got some girth, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a big man. He sure is. Well, the reason we have big referees like this is the president of the American Wrestling Federation, Mr. Paul Alperstein, says the rules are going to be enforced, and he's going to have referees like Jesse to do it. We'll be talking to him later on. Mick, I think I just counted 912 eye gouges by Sonny Rogers. He is definitely the master of the eye gouge, but he better have more than that in his artillery if he's going to take the measure of Tony Atlas, drilling him now with an elbow across the sternum in for the cover. Got a one, two, oh! Into orbit that time. 
Oh, the strength of Tony Atlas. Once again, Rogers in on top. Yeah, look at this camera work, though. I mean, everything that's in this ring, we get a ringside view of it. Best seat in the house. And look at Tony Atlas fire up. Oh, Sonny Rogers, get out of Dodge, my friend. Eye gouge, eye gouge. Oh, he right to the side of the jaw. Tony Atlas. Over oh, 8,000. Our turnbuckle cap just about dislodged with the force. Tony Atlas tossing Sonny Rogers around like a ping pong ball right now. You know, you take a look at the size difference in these two men. Clearly a mismatch that way. Him from no. My son has a paper airplane that doesn't go that far. I tell you, we have this quake cam, I call it. It's on the turnbuckle. You can see the action. You can see the actual ring move. Another innovation of the American Wrestling Federation. And that's why we are the wrestling of the 21st century. We are down to the last 30 seconds of this one as Tony Atlas locks those tree trunks. Hey, is, is that girl keeping time? I see she's got a computer in her lap. Is that a computer or a clock? Is she the official timekeeper? Well, I have no idea. I, I do know that Mr. Rogers, once again, in the Guinness Book for Eye Gouge, just delivered one more Mr. to Tony Rogers. Atlas. <laughs> Mr. Rogers, he's in the wrong neighborhood, I guarantee you. But he did last one round. Well, he certainly did that, taking Mr. USA, Tony Atlas, to the limit. Stay with us, everybody. We're coming back with round two. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. In between rounds, referee Jesse Hernandez admonished Sonny Rogers for continuous eye gouging. He awarded that round to Tony Atlas. If this thing goes three rounds, do you think there's any way in the world Sonny's going to win? I can't imagine. Yeah, well, one person he's not going to eye gouge is this week's Warrior. Let's throw it to the Warrior's Corner right now. Hi, I'm Johnny Gunn, and you are the luckiest wrestling fans in the world to be watching the new and hottest wrestling promotion, the American Wrestling Federation. Tune in next week, because you're going to see Johnny Gunn housequake the nation, baby. But yet another outstanding athlete competing here in the American Wrestling Federation, Johnny Gunn. Back to the action at hand, and Sonny Rogers is paying a price for the eye gouges, and I guess just for being Sonny Rogers right now. Look over here, Mick. I'm going to eye gouge you. Come here. Leave me alone. Atlas is on fire, and he drills him into that top turnbuckle. Oh, you got Tony Atlas upset. And you have made a serious mistake once again, the turnbuckle cam. Quake cam, quake cam. Taking you right into the ring, and now the fans certainly enjoy this. Tony Atlas signaling that the beginning of the end is certainly near for Sonny Rogers. Oh, my word. You know what kind of incredible strength that takes to press a 230-pound man over your head? I don't want to find out. Come here, Mick. Look at Sonny Rogers. He knows that the only way is down, and he is slammed with authority to the canvas. Tony Atlas, oh, man, that has got to do it, and it does. I got the referee. It's your only answer, Sonny. I love this part. Let's go to the instant replay. Boom, into the quake cam. Follow with a gorilla slam. I'm a poet and don't know it. Hit it with that body splash. Bang, Tony Atlas, the winner. All right, everybody, let's send it to Ken Resnick with the president of the American Wrestling Federation, Paul Alperstein. Ladies and gentlemen, without question, there's been a tremendous amount of talk all throughout the country regarding this new American Wrestling Federation prior to this very first inaugural program of the AWF. But to give you a little bit more background, I've asked the president of the American Wrestling Federation, Mr. Paul Alperstein, to join me out here. And I guess first thing I should ask you, what would you like to be called, sir? Uh, Paul will be just fine. Okay, Paul it is. Paul, what way back first brought you to create this new American Wrestling Federation? Well, I've been a fan of the sport of wrestling for many years. And I've seen the wrestling industry change dramatically. And I wanted to bring it back to the roots of its sport. Now, Paul, I know you've made it very clear you are going to take a very hard line regarding following the rules here in the American Wrestling Federation. Yes, the rules of the American Wrestling Federation will be enforced, and the rules are quite simple. First, there is no throwing anybody over the top rope. There is no touching the referee. And there is a break on a 10 count. If they do not do those things, they will be disqualified. Well, Paul, I think a lot of us are glad to hear that, but I've been very curious, as have people all over the country, why did you decide to institute the round system here in the American Wrestling Federation? Well, I've been around wrestling for a while, and I've seen many different types of styles. And I thought that to create a system unique 
to this business would be something phenomenal for the fans to see. And I think the round system will be something the fans will want to see throughout the world. Now, I know a lot of people have been very curious, besides the television programs, which I understand is being syndicated all around the country, you do plan in the not-too-distant future to be running shows in arenas around the country as well. In the very near future, we will be touring not only the United States, but foreign countries who are wanting us to come in there and show them what the American Wrestling Federation is all about. Well, there's no question. The public, the press, the reviews have been very positive so far. Again, the president of the AWF, Mr. Paul Alperstein. We're back with the Warriors of Wrestling. Take it away, Billy Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is scheduled for three rounds. Introducing first from Charlotte, North Carolina, weighing 225 pounds, Rick Thunder. Who is the most unlucky guy on earth? And his are looking at him. Weighing Rick Thunder. 307 pounds, Nails. Well, Terry Taylor, we're going to find out in short order if Paul Elferstein, the president of the American Wrestling Federation, was serious about enforcing the rules and instructing the referees not to let things get out of hand. Nails is perhaps the most diabolical, sadistic man in wrestling, and we're going to find out what a rule book means to him right now. That DOC, is that like Doc? Because nobody operates in the ring like him? Look at the expression on his face, and I guarantee you that expression never changes. You'll see some teeth once in a while, but that's about it. He is as vicious and as sadistic as any man you will ever see in a professional wrestling ring, and poor Rick Thunder, right from the get-go, is being hammered. Yeah, this guy, Nails, doesn't know sit-outs, doesn't know technical terms, he doesn't know anything. There you see the Quake Cam, he just comes in and maims and destroys everybody in his path. I mean, this Quake, his camera work almost takes us too close. Well, I have to be a, a little bit cynical, unfortunately, here. What do Nails and professional wrestling, as far as technique is concerned, have to do with each other? This man is a back alley brawler. Let's face it, he will do anything absolutely anything to get his hand raised in victory. And Terry, I honestly don't think this man cares about championships or anything else. Yeah, almost every battle is like being in the prison yard for survival. I mean, now he's biting the guy on the side of the face, choking him. I think now I know who killed Jeffrey Dahmer. Well, there's no question about that. And again, that expression has not changed. Out to the ringside floor goes Rick Thunder. That's a very, very safe place for him to be. No, it is not. I think I just heard Rick Thunder say thank you. But now he doesn't know what's coming up behind him. Oh, man. There are no such things as ring ropes or the confines of a ring when it comes to nails. Our camera's going to follow him, the great camera crew with the American Wrestling Federation. Oh, no, he's got a stool. Oh, my God. I do not believe that. He tossed that stool some 30 feet and hit Rick Thunder right in the head. Now he's grabbed the steel folding chair. He just threw the girl out of halfway out of the building. If this isn't a disqualification, Alperstein, what is? I mean, this guy's going to have to be fine. Who's going to control it? Is it Mr. President Paul Alperstein? It isn't going to be me. Well, they did ring the bell and finally disqualify Nail. Oh, he continues the assault. One referee can't control this guy. We've got to get some help out here, Terry. He has lost it. This man is nuts. Yeah, he is. He's out there hanging Rick Thunder, who thought he was coming in for a wrestling match. He's got this guy by this cord. Look at this. Oh, please, come on. Oh, my. He's the judge, the jury, and the executioner. This is almost like a gallows situation. Poor Rick Thunder, the mistake of his life signing on with this wild man in nails. And again, look at the expression. Oh, he should be in a straitjacket someplace. He is absolutely gone. Paul Alperstein, American Wrestling Federation, I do not envy you one bit. And I know Paul is in the vicinity. I don't know if our camera has picked it up or not. He is watching this one very closely as Nails continues the assault. I would, yeah, I wouldn't be watching this too closely. Oh, this guy is unbelievable. And now the referee comes out. Now if Nails touches a referee, there's going to be fines to pay. Here's the highlights replay. Are these highlights? I don't know. Yeah, I was in professional wrestling 14 years, not always doing things the right way. Never like this. Let's go to Ken Resnick. 
I'm standing with Sir Oliver Humperdinck, and Sir Oliver, very honestly, you were one of the first managers to enter the American Wrestling Federation. Let me tell you one thing, Ken Resnick, I don't stay around as long as I have by being a slouch. I know where the good things are happening, and it's happening right here in the American Wrestling Federation, and I know there's a lot of people out there right now that are mighty unhappy to see me, but get used to it, because I'm going to be around a long time, because I've got with me in the American Wrestling Federation, the greatest tag team to ever come out of the state of Texas, and there's been legions of them. But these two guys, my new tag team, are at the pinnacle of tag team success. I'm talking about Killer and Psycho, the <laughs> Texas Haven. Talk to them, you know, I'm gonna tell you something, Ken Resnick. You're looking at the two biggest, baddest, pieces of meat ever to step out of the state of Texas. And now we're here in the AWF, the American Wrestling Federation, and we're here for one thing, that's to beat people up. Tell them about it, killer. Step into the war zone, boys. <laughs> Let's next go week, back to ringside. It starts next week. Well, certainly a force to be reckoned with, Sir Oliver Humperdinck and the Texas Hangman, but I cannot get over what we saw a little bit earlier on from Nails. He has been heavily fined by Paul Alperstein. Terry, that was absolutely bizarre. Yeah, that was bizarre, and look at Ken McGuire. You talk about bizarre pink tights. This guy's got his work cut out for him going against a superstar like this, a warrior in the American Wrestling Federation. You know, this crowd absolutely adores the Sarge. One of the most famous names in the history of this grand and glorious sport of professional wrestling. More patriotic than any wrestler, certainly, in the history of this sport. I have to imagine in my mind, Terry, what would it have been like had Nails gone through boot camp with Sergeant Slaughter? I think that had been World War III. There would have been casualties on both sides. Both these big men, great egos, great size, true warriors in the true sense of the word. But we're going to be back with the start of this match right after I drop and have Karst do 20 push-ups. Everybody stay tuned. We'll be right back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And during the commercial break, a young fan here in attendance apparently did not get a flag the first time Sarge made his way around ringside. He actually got out of the ring and presented that youngster with a flag. Certainly made her day. And now he's backed up Kenny Maguire into the corner and a clean break by Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, I know he likes giving kids flags. I guess that's why he gave you one. Well, I enjoy it. I'm patriotic. It's all right. I am too. You know, Sergeant Slaughter's really got to be happy with a guy in there with pink tights on and with hair like that, because you know Sarge likes his hair high and tight. See? Well, just a bit. And Kenny Maguire, figuring discretion is the better part of valor, backs up. Wants to take a break here if ever anybody should utilize every second in the round system to pace himself and stay away, it's Kenny Maguire. Yeah, Sergeant Slaughter, true superstar. Right there, you have the quake cam almost in the ring. Bang, what a shot. But there's somebody who is coming to the American Wrestling Federation for one reason, and he's about to tell us why. You look at the chic at the and the by the American Wrestling Federation. You will be surprised when I have the greatest wrestler in the world. Next week, you will meet him. And wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You know, every once in a while, Sheik not LKC blurs the English and the Arabic. And that was a perfect example of it. You talk about a mortal enemy of Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, but look at this. You talk about mortal enemies. Kenny McGuire turning it on. I'm not sure he knows what he's going to do when he gets fired. <laughs> Sergeant Slaughter fired up. Well, Sarge has unloaded on Kenny McGuire, drills him to that ample midsection <laughs> with the knee. And Kenny McGuire has obviously made a tremendous error in judgment. Sarge goes low once again. Obviously, a weak point on Mr. McGuire. Well, I hope he didn't hurt his knee with that move. The size of that boiler landed on it. Oh, unbelievable. And Sarge signaling for the slaughter cannon as only he can deliver it. He has immortalized this move and what a shot. Oh, he about beheaded Kenny Maguire. 
Yeah, that would be an improvement in his looks. There he goes, set for the most famous move in professional wrestling, the Cobra Clutch. And if he gets it on, that's it. Kenny McGuire's got no choice. He's got to give up, and there he does. Oh, he is history right in the middle of the ring. The Surge with that Cobra Clutch on Kenny McGuire. He got a couple of shots in on the man from Paris Island, but very, very ineffectual. And the tremendously popular Sergeant Slaughter breaks up a victory here in the American Wrestling Federation. Everybody in here, especially the children, USA, USA, America's hero, Sergeant Slaughter. Almost too much for me, Carson. And you can bet the competition is going to heat up for the Sarge. Yeah, well, it should. Hit me a drill instructor all. Let's go to the replay. Right now, Jelly Belly in the corner, bang on the chest, hooks him in the Cobra Clutch, and that's it for Ken McGuire. Let's go to our partner in broadcast excellence, Ken Resnick. If there was any doubt, you all saw the fans reaction. He is indeed America's hero, G.I. Joe, Sergeant Slaughter. Sarge, come on in. Great hey, to Ken. see you again. Good to be back, killer. And what a way to join. Start out here in the American Wrestling Federation. Sure is. First off, I got a little gift for you there. Well, I saved one of those for you. Thank all the you, Sarge. took them away from me, but it's great to be here in the American Wrestling Federation where they finally brought the rules and regulations back, and I'm happy for President Paul Alberstein to do that. Thank you very much. You know, Sarge, the competition, the big names in the American Wrestling Federation, boy, second to none. None better than the American Wrestling Federation. We've got the round systems here, which I really like. And when I put that Cobra Clutch on my opponent, as you just saw, can you imagine a guy walking the ring with t pink tights on with me? <laughs> of course strange. I had to put the Cobra Clutch on him. So I put him down, and I'm going to put everybody down that faces me right here in the American Wrestling Federation. He is America's hero, Sergeant Slaughter. Right. Let's go back to ringside. Well, which one of us did he dismiss, Terry, you or I? Better be you. He won't be talking to me like that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, certainly Sergeant Slaughter means business here in the American Wrestling Federation. Tremendously popular. He took my flag. Where's my flag? He's an Indian giver. We'll see what kind of Indian giver Bobby, Br Bobby Bradley is. That's not easy for you to say. Yeah, he's a good young talent. Let's see what he's going to do against this guy. Everybody up doing the bird. Coco beware. Sit down, Crush. Before you have a heart attack, you can't dance. Oh, man. I thought this guy was from Alcatraz. Oh, stop it. The bird, man. I know. I know what you meant. Coco beware, ladies and gentlemen. Tremendously popular with the fans wherever he appears. What an athlete. What a wrestler. We'll be right back with the start of this matchup. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're all set to go with the Birdman. Coco, beware. There's the bell. Referee Jesse Hernandez gets things underway. This man absolutely had this crowd on their feet all during the commercial break, and he still got them fired up. Somebody call a cab? Oh, will you stop it, for heaven's sakes? Have respect for Coco Beware. This man, tremendously talented. You know it. You've been in the ring with him. A great, great wrestler. Yeah, he's pretty good, but anybody with a hairdo like that, with paint on the sides of his head, has got to be good with suspenders and everything. Oh, look at that Ooh, elevation. Man. Mr. Bradley backs up, and once again, Coco getting the crowd into this one. Would you please sit down and stop flapping your arms? I know you're flying home, but not right now. Ladies and gentlemen, this, of course, the American Wrestling Federation. We've said it before, the most unique and innovative wrestling league in the world today. Coco, beware. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is tie half my brain behind my back just to make it fair so you can keep up with me. There's something else again. Coco ducks the clothesline in over the top. And another to all oh, the drop kick right on the button. And Mr. Bradley has got to be seeing the funny lights and the color. Oh, wait a second. Talk about telegraphing a maneuver. Looks like he was going for a reverse monkey flip, but a lot of people don't understand someone who Coco Beware's agility is also very, very quick. Quicker than a hiccup. Well, Coco Beware has been around the block more than once, and certainly Mr. Bradley could have sent him a Western Union telegram. There's Frankie. Frankie's certainly enjoying this one. Well, I love barbecue bird. Oh, don't start in on Frankie, for heaven's sake. Stay Why with not? the action. It's already been delivered. 
Coco Beware, ladies and gentlemen, everywhere he has appeared, he has climbed right to the top. In talking to him earlier on, he intends to make the American Wrestling Federation no exception, but right now, Bradley has turned it on. He's biting the top of the noggin of Coco Beware. Man, how sanitary could that be? I asked Coco what his game plan was before this match. He said, I don't want to go out on a limb, and I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket, but I'm going to win. That's what he said. I've heard that before. You know, Bob Bradley is taking an awful lot of time posturing to the crowd. He may have Coco in a bad way by right, right now, but he better stay on him, for heaven's sake. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand. It's very easy to dish out punishment, but you got to find out what kind of athlete, what kind of man, what kind of wrestler you are when you're getting beat up. You have what it takes to kick out and to keep coming back. And for 10 years, Coco Beware has had that. Well, certainly, wrestling fans all over the world will attest to that. A little too close to the ropes. Bradley went in for the press. Referee Jesse Hernandez called for the break. This looks more like a mugging, a massacre, or maybe a melee. There hadn't been a wrestling hold yet. Bobby Bradley's just attacked and hadn't backed up a step. Well, this reverse chin lock is about as close to a wrestling hold, certainly, as we've seen out of Bradley. Yeah, how would you score this if you're Jesse Hernandez, the referee? I mean, it hadn't been any takedowns. There's been a few hip locks and maybe a punch to the forehead. Oh, drilled him to the midsection. Then Coco Beware a second time. Oh, but that time, Bradley, I don't think he got all that he wanted, but it was enough to take the Birdman to the canvas and in for a count of two. Very hard to kick out with your arms up over your head like that. Shows the strength of Coco Beware. Right now, we have 26 seconds, 25, 20. Well, you get the idea. We're we get down. the idea. Right, 21 seconds left in this first round. And certainly, Mr. Bradley apparently intent only on weakening Coco Beware right now. He's not going to attempt any pinfalls. Well, there you go. There's a reversal. Oh, sleeper. Coco with the sleeper hold. He's got it right in the middle of the ring. But the time factor once again, Terry, counting it down. Oh, and he escaped. It wasn't the bell. It was that great escape in the corner. Way to go, Bob Bradley. A very smart ring-wise maneuver on the part of Bob Bradley as we come to the end of the first round. Let's stay with it. Yeah, look at this camera work, though. I mean, we were almost in the ring there with Bob Bradley, right there with Coco Beware. Incredible camera work and great commentary, too, if I don't mind saying so much. Well, absolutely not. And at this point in time, Terry, again, if you're Jesse Hernandez, how do you score this one? Certainly at the end of the bout, it looked like, oh, come on, Bradley, back up. Wow, that looked like, looked like a linebacker filling a hole right there. Bobby Bradley picked up that stool he's supposed to be sitting on. Jesse Hernandez better get paid overtime for all this work he's having to do to keep Bradley off Coco Beware. Well, the powers that be in the American Wrestling Federation have instituted the one-minute rest period. Obviously, Bob Bradley wants none of that, and he continues the assault right to the top of the head. And I don't blame him. Coco Beware, a true warrior in the American Wrestling Federation. Speaking of warriors, let's go to Warriors Corner right now. That's right. I am the Roughneck, Mr. Hughes of the American Wrestling Federation. Next week, whoever steps in my face will go down with a sidewalk slam. I am the man. You will go down for the last time. Well, you talk about a man who means business, the awesome Mr. Hughes. Boy, he was intense, wasn't he? Speaking of intense, great cross body by Coco Beware. Bob Bradley moved out of the way. This Bob Bradley showing us a lot of character here. Well, he is very, very Two. tenacious. Oh, so close. What a major upset that would have been. You've got to hand it to Bradley. He is hanging in there against the wrestler, the magnitude of Coco Beware. Yeah, he is. I mean, he is really doing well. Great reversal by Coco Beware. Maybe that's the break he needs to turn it on. Well, Coco's starting to get fired up there. He's looking at the crowd. He's waving goodbye. No, he's not waving goodbye at all, for heaven's sakes. Coco back to his feet. Bradley ineffectual with that punch. And now Coco Beware on the offense. Nice reversal by Bradley. Oh, for heaven's sakes. He might as well have written the letter. Coco caught it right underneath the chin. Caught a one, two, and did he get him? No, Bradley can't. Oh. Oh. I can't believe it off the top rope, one foot. Coco Beware can't believe it. So very, very close. An eighth of a count away. And once again, oh, he drilled it. Man. That has got to do it. That Ghostbuster, and it is all over. Bobby Bradley, I think, wishes he stayed down on that one-footed drop kick off the top. 
That Ghostbuster just made him five foot one. What a move by Coco, beware. Well, Coco looked to be in trouble for a moment. Yeah, as we see on this instant replay, mm. boom, right on the top of his head. Man, what a win by Coco, beware. And when we come back, ladies and gentlemen, we will be hearing from Greg the Hammer Valentine and his manager, Rico Suave. A very impressive debut indeed for Coco Beware here in the American Wrestling Federation. Coco and speaking Beware. of impressive debuts, so Rico Suave, the debut of your man, Greg Valentine. Well, you know something? It came no surprise to me, but some of you morons out there that might not realize that Rico Suave has the best, the most talented, and the best looking wrestlers in the world. Say, so speaking of good looking, who is this woman with a computer at ringside? Don't worry about her, moron. I heard about you and the way you like to make moves on the girls, and she belongs to me. But let me tell you something about the computer. Computer. It did come up with three names. Three names. Names that are going to take the Suave family right to the top. Well, who are the other two names? Don't then? worry about the other two, but let me bring in number one. The man, the man you just saw wrestle and tear apart that little moron. I think his name was Ronnie Vegas. I think he's heading back to Atlantic City, though. He's so screwed up. What do you think, Gregory? Well, I'll tell you what, all you had to do with that computer is push in greatness, and then you got Greg the Hammer Valentine, a name that is synonymous in professional wrestling with greatness and everything about true wrestling because I am the master of the figure four leg lock, the greatest hole in professional wrestling, which is going to take us all the way to the top. Well, Terry, what a tremendous debut for the Warriors of Wrestling and the American Wrestling Federation. You've made the right choice with the American Wrestling Federation. So until next week, you're dismissed.